right, as we were talking about before the break, um, it seems not a day goes past without the legacy media or someone on social media making outrageous claims about these stop co-governance meetings. And we've had the person who organises them, Julia Bet- Julian Batcher, on, on the show quite a few times. Um, but it now appears that every meeting somehow the temperature is being raised. Um, and the latest one, or, or the latest one that's got the most attention, a woman, I think, in Palmerston North goes along to the meeting, sneaks in, blows a whistle and just tries to completely disrupt it and bring it to an end. She is quite forcibly manhandled out of the meeting by people who are attending there. Someone yells, pill her pants down. I don't know what that's got to do with it. And suddenly she is cry-bullying all over the place, saying, oh, this is outrageous, someone should be arrested. Um... And a few people say, F around and find out. No one likes assault against a woman or indeed anyone else. But what is going on here? And are these people counter-protesters or anti-free speech protest activists? That's what I'd now start calling them, and I think the mainstream media should too. Well, to find out what impact this is having on the co-governance meeting, we're joined again by Julian Batchelor. G'day, mate. How are you? G'day, Sean. Nice to be with you. Um... Julian, am I wrong in looking at what's happening and the coverage of what's happening and saying the tensions around your meetings are rising? Oh, no, without a doubt, they're definitely rising and uh, we're getting more and more protesters at every meeting. We're getting um, more and more um, unacceptable behaviour from protesters. For example, when our people left the meeting, when they tried to enter the meeting, they had to wade through um, 10 or 20 protesters deep outside the gates of the pr- property and when they're leaving they're getting spat on punched kicked, oh, oh hang on hang on phones. people are being spat on by the protesters people are being spat on by the protesters as they're leaving um they're being punched kicked having their cell phones knocked out of their hands um they're being told that you're going to be we're going to kill you we're going to find out where you live and all this sort of stuff so it's getting pretty pretty wild out there but the thing is that the interest about all this has gone exponentially through the roof and we just had a meeting in Hastings uh, night before last and um, 25 protesters got inside one lady about 25 year old Maori lady sat in the front row and uh, she lurched at my laptop about a third of the way through the presentation raised it and pulled all the wires out of it it also happened in about five five seconds pulled all the wires out of it pulled it up above the top of her head and then threw it down forcefully onto a concrete floor and then tipped the data projector off the table and then uh, pulled off the all the... Um, I have a sound desk and all the, yeah. all the gear that you need to run a meeting. She pushed all that off. The police rushed her, got her, took her away in the paddy wagon. She's been charged with willful damage and, and um, uh, disturbing the peace. Um, and so uh, things are really heating up. But the miracle was that that data projector, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write to Apple, and we've actually got the footage of her doing this now. And um, when I picked the data projector up off the floor, I thought, oh, this is toast. This just cannot be a, a data projector that's going to go. And it, and it went perfectly. It was in mint condition. So was the data projector. So wow. the laptop and the data projector were okay. perfect. Nobody can explain how that happened. Julian, I've seen on social media a lot of uh, coverage about this woman in Palmerston North. What happened there? Well... We got going with a meeting, probably five minutes into it, this lady suddenly uh, put a whistle in her mouth, started blowing it furiously, um, and uh, the people in there were just so upset about this because we explained the rules to them. If you disturb the meeting, you will be taken out. Mm. Um, this is a private meeting. All the rules were explained. She fired up straight after the rules were explained to her. A couple of people just um, who were sitting kind of near her just took it into their own hands. We usually have the police take them out, but these guys were just so annoyed and frustrated by these people who are so disrespectful, so um, just trashing everybody's right to free speech, put, got, pulled her out of the chair, they pulled the whistle out of her mouth and then pulled her out of the chair. She wasn't punched or anything, they just grabbed her by the scruff of the neck and then she fell on the ground and they got her by the legs and they started, just, they just pulled her out of the building. Somebody shouted out, I, I, I didn't actually hear it, somebody shouted out, pull her pants down and, and I didn't um, actually mm. hear that, but they say that's what, what, what yeah. happened. And she was taken out of the meeting. Okay, and she so, been know, charged with disrupting the meeting, or, or you're not? What? No, she's she's not charged. She's now the she's now the hero, heroine of the of the meeting. She's now the lady who is the victim, uh, and um, she's a hero, heroine, female. Mm. Um, and 
So we got this we got this big thing happening. The media is working against us, Sean, and they're paid to through the fifty five million dollar public interest journalism fund. So they're they're working in collaboration with the activists. When I that that lady, do you know the whistle? She blew it so loud. She's broken the eardrum of an eighty year old lady in front of her. And wow. she's having treat media media doesn't mention that. Mm. Julian Look, you are organising these meetings, and I'm not saying you're responsible for the bad stuff that's going down, but there's an obligation on you to do what you're doing with as little harm to others as possible, and I'm sure as a moral person you'd take that position. I just wonder if we, could take, if we could take the opportunity this morning just to clarify for anyone who wants to protest, and, and there's a lot of confusion uh, in mainstream media. They are public meetings. Are these public meetings? What are the rules for these meetings? They are most definitely private meetings. We took police advice at the Oriwa we meeting two months ago, three months ago now. The police said you must make these meetings private. So we've got advertising everywhere. They are private meetings and we have the final say on who enters the building. Sometimes some of these people get through, uh, like the lady with the blue whistle. But they are private meetings and it's pretty much uh, on a parallel with having a wedding venue for your wedding reception. Yeah. And you don't let everybody into your wedding reception. You, you have guests. You have private guests who come into your wedding reception. You don't invite everybody in. And mm. we hire a building. Legally, it's our building And what for the would night. you it's say to protesters who get in once they start protesting? How will they be dealt with? We say to them, you broke the rules. I'm trespassing you. And uh, we're getting the police to take you out. That's what the that's what the yeah. protocol is. But these couple of guys just said, um, "This is this is so bad. We're gonna we're gonna we'll just yeah. do it ourselves." Okay. So and you do have the opportunity to people who might go to a meeting like this in future. What is your advice to other people attending when they see someone protesting? Should they leave it to the police? They should leave it to the police. But you know what? We can't say what happens because sometimes people in these we've got some big guys who come to these meetings. And they're just, they're farming types and they're, they're don't muck around type of guys. And you take a risk. If you muck around in our meetings now, you take a risk that you could be manhandled before the police get to you. It's not my fault. It's just how it is. We, we, and we say to people, don't manhandle um, uh, protesters. Let the police do it. But sometimes things happen quickly, and that's what happened with this yeah. lady with the blue whistle. The guys just took it into their own hands, and she was hauled out. Yeah. That was it. Bam. Yeah, I, I note she hasn't uh, taken us up on it. We did try and get out of it, didn't we, Ben? No go? Wouldn't come back to us, didn't want to talk? Okay. Um, Julian, what about the police? Because I've noticed too, and in conversation with you, they have increased the level of security at, at your around your private meetings. Uh, yep. Have they been... Well, just tell me in your own words, how have they treated you? Well, it varies from place to place. Some police are good, some are, some are appalling. Some of them actually seem to be working with the protesters and, you know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge when protesters do things and uh, they turn a blind eye to certain things. Um, and, um, you know, one, for example, one of our team was leaving the meeting, cell phone was knocked out of her hand, it was kicked around on the concrete uh, on the car park area by protesters and the lady appealed to the policeman who was standing right there and, and what he said, I didn't see that. And turned what? the other way. Yep. Where was that, Julian? That was Palmerston North. So and the lady who had that happen to her is prepared to write an affidavit to that effect. Wow. Well, she should. She should lay a complaint with the Police Complaints Authority. We uh, can get her on your show. It's easy to get her on. All right. We'll have a talk about that later today. That's appalling. Absolutely appalling. And as to point. who is organising this, we know we've had this group, Aotearoa Liberation League, who seem to be incredibly well-funded. Um, but it seems to me there are other groups now, if you like, taking the lead on what I think we can no longer call a counter-protest. It is an anti-free speech activist thing that's going on now. Do you yep. know who the group is who's organising this? Well, my car was outside in the car park in Palmerston North and uh, we had graffiti all over the car when I came out. They'd let two of the tyres down on the car. And we had to get the AA. We didn't get home till two in the morning. We had to let the, um, you know, get, get the AA and to pump the tyres up, and we had to clean up the car. But on the car was written Antifa, all over the car. Mm. And so, um, we now no longer have just the Aotea Liberation League. We have Antifa, and there's another group called the 
um, anti-fascist Aotearo, I think it's called, uh, group. Yeah. So there's several different political groups, but we know this is being funded because we often see the same people turning up. Plus, but there was 150 in Palmerston North, and and another hundred at Hastings turned up. Mm. And they did a haka outside. Mari did a haka outside, and the building was actually shaking at one stage in the middle of downtown Hastings. We're on the front page of the yeah. uh, Hawks Bay Today news this morning. Do you think people are getting both sides of the story through mainstream media, Julian? Oh, absolutely not. The media has been paid out. They're in the pocket of the government. This is a government-orchestrated, government-funded, anti-free speech going against... Uh, I don't know. I don't see any ministers involved in this, Julian. That, that, that's quite a long, long stretch. Of course, they wouldn't put their names to it, would they? Mm. But you can, you can tell somebody's, somebody's behind this, somebody's organising this, somebody's funding this, these people. And... Um, it's um it's 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 that's what's happening we're, we're sure of that right. in so in fact in some places we believe maybe it's even the police who are letting people know where these meetings are last night we had a meeting years ago yeah. last night we had a fantastic meeting in hastings uh we did it telephone only the police rang us and said where's your meeting tonight we want to help you we said we'll let you know we didn't let them know and not one protester turned up it's the first time we oh, hang on, hang on. This is interesting. So so you actually had a physical meeting last night in Hastings? We had a, a really good physical meeting last night. It was telephone only, so it was people just networking with their phones. We got, a, we got a great location to have the meeting. We executed the meeting. We did not tell the police. The police were on to us all afternoon. Where's your meeting? Where's your meeting? We said, we don't know yet. We're just confirming that. And uh, we thought, let's not tell the police about this. Let's see how it goes. In the it would be very week. interesting, Gillian, if you use that tactic again and see if you don't have any protesters again. That would kind of suggest that there is someone in police leaking to the protesters. I would. It, it seems like it's that. We can't prove that. But it seems like that is happening because we'll do it again tonight. It's the first time we've had no protesters. And it's the first time we haven't called the police. There you go. That's that's an interesting story. That's a story I'd like to read about in my mainstream media, Julian. You never get the mainstream media talking about yeah. that because if there's collusion going on, of course, you know, since I started this whole tour, the level of the corruption at every level is exponentially uh, being exposed by me. Mm. And I'm finding out stuff that you just would have, you know, you would have just dream about and think, oh, that's not possible. But it's all, it's, it's happening. Yeah. Okay, Julian, so, uh, well, are you going to give it another crack, this word of mouth thing? It's like, you're, it's like you're the French resistance, mate. Well, we're meeting underground, um, and um, we're having fantastic meetings, and you know what, it's a marvellous thing when you get free speech. Last night, there was no protesters there at all, great crowd, and, um, you know, just to have a meeting where you're able to to say what you want to say, and people are, are there to hear what they've come to hear, so that free speech is preserved. This is now a rare thing in New Zealand. Mm. How long are you going to keep on going? Because you can only have so many meetings and so many venues. No, we're going we're, we're to keep on going because well past the election and, and as, as long as we... If we haven't stopped co-governance, we're going till we stop this thing because it's wrong. It's completely wrong and it's completely um, not mandated in the treaty. And so there's massive fraud and corruption and we're just going to keep going till it's gone. Luxton has shifted. In his position, he's now, we're totally against co-governance, apparently. Mm. People are following him around. He's moved. And we now have the the um, the Electoral Commission writing to us saying we're, we're going to you know, stop you sending out your booklets because they're putting people off voting, the Maori Party and the Labour Party. What? So we've got okay, Julian, you keep on dropping these mini bombshells on me. So the Electoral Commission have written to you saying what about your booklet? Saying that our booklet is causing people, putting them off voting for the Maori Party and the Labour Party, and uh, therefore you're in, under investigation. And um, the, the, if you read between the lines, we're going to um, either fine you or stop you from pr um, distributing your book anymore. So we've got a lawyer dealing with that. Do and, you advocate uh, for voting for one party or another at your meetings? Absolutely, absolutely we don't. No, we I've never picked that up in all the times I've talked to you. No, we never talk, and I'm very careful about that because I, I do talk about national. I talk about all the parties. I talk about Labor, the Greens, National, everybody, and and I tell them what I tell the the people in the audience what their position is on co-governance, and um, that's what I do. So I never advise who to vote for, never, and have never done that. 
I don't belong to... But you're saying um, you've been told by the Electoral Commission that they are investigating you. Yeah, to try and shut down the book. So they've... I could send you the letter. We got... Yeah, from yeah, do you send us a copy, Julian. We'll get into this. This is crazy. Uh, this, yeah, this is, is crazy. This is crazy because this book is just informational. You know it. You've seen mm. it. The book is just informational. It's giving the public information about co-governance um, so that they can vote intelligently. And now we have um, the... Uh, Electoral Commission on our case, trying to shut it down. Mm. We also got a letter yesterday from the Human Rights Commission saying you're breaching all the human rights. Okay. And, we, we, we and you are so clearly suggesting violent. today, Julian, and I do, do just want to nail it down because it's such an amazing story. You believe the police, in some instances, have been cooperating with the counter-protesters to try and stop your meetings or disrupt your meetings. Well, absolutely. The, the person who had the telephone kicked out, so it's knocked out of her hand and then kicked around the car park at Palmerston North with a policeman watching and she appealed to the police to say, did you see all and that? And he did nothing. And but you're also saying that you had a meeting last night and you didn't tell police where it was and there was no protesters and when you do tell police, they turn up and the protesters turn up as well. Correct. You got it. That's 100% how it is. It seems like that. We're going to do another one tonight, have another test. Uh, to, to, to have another private meeting without telling the police and um, we will see what happens and so we can get some some um, uh, empirical evidence about this. Yeah, more, okay. More we'll keep in touch on that, Julian, and we'll talk to you uh, off air after the show. This is really interesting. And, look, I thank you for your time um, uh, this morning and I hope you can live in a country where you continue to exercise your freedom of speech and association. Thanks, Sean. Great show. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Julian Batchelor, the spokesperson for Stop Co-Governments. Well, well, that's pretty heavy allegations. And they are just allegations, but isn't that curious? And, geez, I'd love to hear from the woman, and, and we'll try and get her on, the woman who had her phone taken off her, kicked around a car park, and a police officer stood by and watched and said, I didn't see that. And now we have Julian Batchelor saying, when they tell the police where the meetings are, the protesters seem to find out. What is going on here? Um, and the woman who says, oh, they wanted to pull my pants down, it was terrible what happened to me. Do ring in. Come on, box your corner. Brave enough to sneak into a meeting, brave enough to come on the platform.